A special thank you to my patrons who make this sort of content possible by supporting me. If you're interested in supporting me and getting your name on videos just like these lovely people, you can click the link in the description. Thank you so much for your support. Hello, welcome, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Fighter Jet Roundtable Season 3, Episode 7! Holy mackerel, it has been a long, long time since we've gotten an episode done. But, um, don't worry, I have a perfectly good reason for that. Uh, yeah, but until we get into the explanation of that, let's go ahead and get down to the watchtower on the round table and see what I have in store for all of you today. So... What is the situation and why the hell do we have such a long delay? Well, to put it simply, BDA changed their gun explosion damage settings, and a lot of other things. Uh, specifically, they fixed a bug that made, uh, that was preventing explosive damage from calculating correctly when it was, well, dealing damage to parts. And since that bug was fixed, all the explosion damage and damage of guns in general was much, much higher than it was uh, previously. So we had to take a bunch of time, look at our guns, get information on whether or not we wanted to keep things the same or move more or less or uh, anything else, blah, 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 all that other fun stuff. But luckily we were able to get that all sorted out. And uh, now here we are. So Kaz Kerbin's just chilling, looking at his little screen there. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll turn it on eventually. Right now, I think he's just, you know, having some sort of internal existential crisis. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see what kind of aircraft we've got uh, lined up and uh, get to fighting because I've done enough talking for now. <laughs> I say as I go into more talking. So, as per usual, we're going to start with a scuffed, spinning on the ground aircraft for whatever reason, and I don't know why if I turn on SAS, it just proceeds to still spin. So, yeah, super fun. This, the Boeing FA-18 Hornet Stardust, and its partner, the Moonlight, not that important. Uh, that is sent in by Waffle, courtesy of KF. Uh, mostly because Waffle doesn't have a whole lot of, uh... Well, Waffle doesn't have uh, access to KSP at this point in time. Uh, not in a major way, so need to rely on KF to get these things out. Super cool, though. As you can see, it's a Hornet. And I chose this one specifically because it's, well, it's got some very interesting weapon choices. Three very nasty gun pods as special weapons, or rather not special weapons, but upgrades. Uh, and two twin, well, Twin Medusas there in the nose for ultimate DACA. As uh, far as that, it's just got some standard AIM-9s, so this is going to be a super close range threat. I really don't know why this stupid crap keeps happening, but I tell you, it's really annoying. Anyway, let's move on to the next one over here. This is the F-18SM Super Hornet sent in by Android Elite. You can actually tell because uh, it's got his Darien Roundel there. Looks very nice. It's got a functioning uh, fuel tank there. Very cool. It'll keep it and drop it uh, when it's time comes. Running with Quams as his special weapon there. Uh, also using the Typhoon afterburning engines instead of the 117S engines that are over there and on many of these aircraft. Uh, standard AIM 120Cs, and a Vulcan gun in the nose. It's actually two Vulcan guns, very, very uh, close to each other, so. Very canonical Hornet loadout, and a beautiful looking aircraft, if I do say so myself. Either way, moving on to the next one over here, we have the RA-28E Seabird sent in by Raven. Uh, pretty cool, he's actually made himself a custom little, uh, can't really see it very well. There we go. A cute little custom decal there, which uh, I always appreciate. You know, people taking time to really spice up things. Uh, pretty cool. So yeah, this is also a, a Hornet. It's got AIM-120Ds there on the sides, looking pretty cool. 
along with some meteors, four meteors actually, an EML for its uh, special weapon, which is quite cool, and the pulse laser gun in the nose, which was uh, right there. Very, very nice, honestly, and another very nice looking aircraft, just in general. Uh, you can see we're having a little bit of a, uh, well, we're, we're having a little bit of a, uh, well, uh, you might notice a theme. There was a lot of hornets. Um, it might even be a hornet's nest, you know, a, a nest of hornets. Super fun. Anyway, we have the LF-181 Dodo Mark II here. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool looking plane, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, reminds me very much of the, uh... What the heck is the name of that thing? Uh, it's, uh, the Stealth Hornet from, uh, it's like the Black, Black Wasp. That's what it is, from Arma. Pretty cool. This is sent in by Lucas. Looks, uh, nice. It's got lambs here on the, on the nose. Very cool. Laser anti-missile systems. Um, and of course this one over here also has laser anti-missile systems on the sides. One here and one on the edge along with those, uh, jammers. Very cool. But at the end of the day, that is uh, our first four competitors. Let's go ahead and see what the next four have in store for you, shall we? So the next group of our competitors starts off with this, the Hagalaz, uh, which is named after the Norse rune. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation, but you know, hey, what can we do? This lovely little contraption here is sent in by none other than the illustrious, the amazing Spectrum. A relative newcomer to things. Uh, we can see that it's got making use of those cool aviation lights, finally, which is uh, always a nice, nice thing. I like seeing that. Looks like a pretty stealthy aircraft using the eight AAM pods down here, which were fixed in a recent VDA update. So they should uh, actually fire correctly now, which is a nice benefit. Over here, we have the KMX-12B Harpe II sent in by our good buddy, Crikey. Um, Crikey didn't provide his um, his emblem, so instead he's just got the uh, Martin Cito Pants uh, pain emblem, because, yeah, it's, it's a painful life, you know, what can I say? Aircraft looks pretty, well, pretty nimble, honestly, with that single engine there and those nice big wings. Looks very... Well, very balanced. Running with QAMs, R-27 ETs, which are long-range heat-seeking missiles, and Mica IRs. So a very lightweight aircraft here. I'm expecting pretty cool things to come from this. Over here, the KU-76 Grimoire Block II, sent in by another newcomer, Joan Santa. I'm probably destroying that name. I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can. Either way, our good buddy John, or John Santa, we'll say, uh, Santa, Santa went in and sent in this, um, so I got a few things I have to say about it, but mainly, yeah, so, so that's a thing. Uh, either way, over here, it's also running with QAMs as a special weapon, meteors, mica IRs, IRS, uh, Iris T. Uh, special missiles and two GAU 22s. Uh, not sure what else to say about this. Oh, it is also running with the XA 101 adaptive uh, adaptive cycle turbofan engine. So this thing will rip through the sky uh, very fast, I would imagine. Um, also using uh, cool tinted Mark II cockpits, uh, Mark II stuff. And then honestly, my favorite uh, uh, plane, just in general here, is the, the VMF 21 Kestrel. Uh, of Stargazer Squadron, or, you know, whatever, Stargazer 1. This is sent in by Mecha Meme, and, well, it's... it It's a Macross jet. It's literally a Macross jet! Look at this thing! It's even using the, uh... the TRTE uh, engines, which are based off of Macross, and then it's also using the AGU-11 Death Gun down there, which also is inspired by Macross, uh... And it's actually a Macross plane, about as close as possible as he could get it. And this thing, it's just so cool. <laughs> it's huge! It's fast! That gun is absolutely terrifying. I am expecting some very interesting things to come from this aircraft and its partner. 
So, uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and see who's fighting who and get our aircraft into the skies. So, here we are at the start of round one! We have Stargazer Flight versus Team Who Needs Gimbal Lamau, even though they're using gimbal stuff. So, yeah, I had to pause it just because these guys like to, you know, do the spin. So, uh, we're going to start the competition and uh, resume that flight. And hopefully they will uh, take off without any problems. Otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. I did everything I could. So, good luck to both of these. And there it is, competition starts. Let's go ahead and hit that auto cam and uh, actually switch to an aircraft. There we go, super fun. So it looks like we're going to follow in the Hornets, at least for the first part. Beautiful shot of those two right next to each other. Pretty cool, gotta say. Both sets of aircraft now making their way. Ooh, and a lovely cloud shot. It is actually a little cloudy out today, so uh, I feel right at home recording this like this. Breaking through the cloud layers. Looks like we've got some missiles away. Looks like they might be meteors. He's also firing those missiles. Very cool indeed. And we see those laser anti-missile systems uh, trying to go to work for both of these aircraft. Hornet's now dropping low, firing those, uh, well, firing the anti-missile systems. Getting very close to their target there. Pretty nice looking flyby. HHQ-10's being launched. At close range, my Stargazer won. The time for missiles is almost at an end now as they're going to start getting close. Pretty sure the Moonlight there has an EML. The other one has all those guns. You can hear that big, nasty gun firing at its target. It sounds like it, there were some hits going on, too. At least one hit. I heard an explosion. Stargazer 1 has actually gotten a hit on the Stardust Hornet. Whoa! Very close. Another very close missile shot. Those big two-point guns are going to deal some damage uh, if they hit the big blue... <laughs> the big blue bomber, as it were. Looks like we've got some fire coming in. Oh! And the AGU-11 doing some nasty damage to uh, Moonlight. This is the Moonlight, this is the Moonlight. Yep! Uh, not much of a plane left there. rips a doodle Not the best. Basically just gonna... Lawn dart into the ground. HU-11, an absolutely vicious, vicious gun. Got a major balance pass uh, with all that stuff. Oh, and a ram! Woo! I didn't need that extra wing. It's still got those very powerful... Oh, ho, ho, and it burns all of its speed! Ooh, jeez Louise. Let me tell you, those uh, HU-11... Your winning cockpit, ladies and gentlemen! Stargazer will go on to fight in the next round. Oh boy, KSP never change. So here we are for the second round of qualifiers. Uh, we have the Seabirds versus the Dodos. Let's go ahead and start this competition. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So the Seabirds sent in by Raven and the Dodos sent in by Lucas. 
both relative newcomers to the scene. Let's see how they do fighting each other. And competition starts once more. Let's go ahead and switch to something. Hit that auto cam and bada bing, bada boom. So the Seabirds are, uh, well, they've proven to be pretty decent when it comes to uh, combat. One of them is actually running with a TLS, and the other there is running with an EML. Both very nasty, uh, very nasty things indeed. Seems to be having a little trouble getting itself to line up there, but uh, trying to seek with that long-range R27 at the moment. Also starting at a relatively high altitude, just like the Dodos are. It's a little odd. Most aircraft don't start that high. Dodos firing something. Ooh, and a nice flyby of the Seabird there. Look at that. Very cool indeed. And the laser ending missile system is firing. You can hear those. Shooting at meteors, it looks like. Whoa! Both of these aircraft have those laser anti-missile systems trying to do the best that they can. That Seabird was firing a TLS at its target. Ooh! EML launching! Nothing getting hit, though. Dodo is in a steep dive to try and evade stuff. Looks like it's getting ready to pull on target. This one is... Those uh, anti-missile systems working quite well as a pair to take out missiles. The placement on that aircraft. Whoa! And another flyby. We've got Stealthy Hornet versus Regular Hornet. Whoa! That was close. Woo! That pulse laser gun. Oh no! Dodo killing the other seabird. We've got one wing and one wing. Oh man. Those Vulcans doing a number on the Seabird here. They may not do the most damage, but boy, let me tell you, do they start those fires. Those fires are bad news for sure. Pulse laser gun actually managing to... Oh! Dodo managing to get killed. You know, it's still got the gun. <laughs> I might... I'm going to let this go, because we've seen stranger things happen. If it kills it as just a cockpit, I will laugh. It is entirely possible that it could. I'm looking on ammo. Oh, plenty of ammo. No problems there. Oh, but it's not going to have a chance with that many shots firing in. I do mean firing. Look at the flames coming off of this thing. Let's check that HP. Not good. And it burns down. Ooh. Well, I guess that means the Dodo, in this case, <laughs> learned to fly. <laughs> you thought you were going to get away without puns. No, 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 no. Remember what channel you're a part of. And round three of the qualifiers starts with the Grimoire and Rune Slayer Squadron. Let's go ahead and start the competition for these two. We have a fight here between Joan Santa and Spectrum, both, again, relative newcomers. So, uh, I think it would be nice for them to kind of fight each other there. Just we'll see how it goes. Good luck to both of our competitors. And competition starts... Boom! Let's go ahead and get down here. So we have, uh, we're following the Grimoires with that very powerful, uh, I'd say 101 Turbo, uh, Turbo fan, whatever. And then we have these, uh, these over here. Rune Slayer Squadron. Again, both of these are relative newcomers. More so from our buddy, uh, Joan Santa here. Not sure what to expect, really. Are we gonna get a cool flyby? Looks like it. 
<laughs> I love when it does that. Looks like it still has its maximum speed set well below its actual threshold. Not sure why it's doing that. And we are, uh... Well, <laughs> they are very much loading the airspace here uh, with missiles between the two as they close in to relative close ranges here. Grimoire's diving, firing more adaptive missiles to try to take out their target, although I'm wondering if those missiles are actually targeting the enemy missiles. They can be set to do that. Not sure why the eight AAMs have not fired, maybe because they just got confused with the number of targets. It's entirely possible. They were firing basically everything else but those uh, eight AAMs for whatever reason. Wham, incoming! Woo! Close. Clams are very nasty little missiles. Just because they miss you doesn't mean they can't come back and bite you in the butt. <laughs> oh, Grimoire compressed into the ground. Oh, that Quam. That was uh, very unlucky. Grimoire looks like it's not having a good day. Oh, so close to the ground. A beautiful chase shot, though. Look at that. Runeslayer just on the tail. Second one coming in from the side, stalling out. Oh, man. Those nasty two-point guns making fairly short work of the Grimoire. Uh, that's the ground, friend! It was inverted! You saw those, uh, that was coming down. The reason it even managed to survive there is uh, because of the new BDA that changed it so it doesn't have to roll over before pulling up. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have crashed. Ah, uh, nice to see those kinds of changes in action. Either way, congratulations to, uh, uh Rune Slayer. You will be moving on. All right, and the final qualifier is here. Let's go ahead and start the competition. We have the 47th Air Squadron Spearhead. Uh, the Harpe sent in by Crikey, and the F-18SM Super Hornet sent in by Android Elite. And competition starts. Let's go ahead and, well, we're gonna switch to this. Harpe already turning around. Pretty sure that's Greek, the Harpe. Or Harpe, something like that. Don't quote me, I'm an English major, not a Greek major, so, you know, hey, we'll, we'll do the best we can. And turn on that auto cam just so we get a little bit. There we go. Plane's uh, basically super cruising there. Easily able to stay above Mach 1 with those engines in non afterburning mode. Meanwhile, the, har the Harpes are just zooming in here, continuing to accelerate almost Mach 1.5 with afterburner. Very light aircraft. That's a single Saturn engine, by the way. Very capable, capable aircraft. Hands down. Honestly, just a very capable engine, too. Super Hornets, uh, closing within range. Aren't trying to evade yet. They do, however, have extended countermeasures, dropping the tank there. Dropping the bags, as they say. Are they shooting those? Well, attempting to shoot the missiles incoming. There, Quam manages to get taken out. Quams are arguably one of the biggest, uh, well, one of the biggest problems for an aircraft like this, and both of them have quams. But one has the uh, anti-missile system and the other does not. Not the best thing. Just everything going on. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. We try and get a better look at what's going on. Quams circling both of those. One of them hitting the ground, the other one... Still up in the air. And now we're back down to a dogfight. The 
looks like something got broken off. Not sure. I think those are uh, BK-27s. Oh! Are they hitting? That's some friendly fire there. Not, not what you want to see. Friendly fire isn't. Remember that. Ow! Oh, dang! Super Hornet. You now have the only Super Hornet here by itself! Ah! Looks like that gun managed to just blast the Harpe. Hornet not in a good position. Has no gimbling engine. Gonna go into the ground. Very sad way to go. Really? What? Harpe is a very capable aircraft and it definitely showed that. That means the Harpe will be moving on to the main event. So here we are, ready to go for the first round of the, well, main event, so to speak. Let's go ahead and start the competition. We've got the Dodos versus Rune Slayer Squadron. Which is, uh, yeah, Lucas versus Spectrum. Will Lucas's Dodo continue its reign, or will the Rune Slayers just slay? And competition starts! Let's go ahead and hit that auto cam and see what we have. Oh, look at that! The 120Ds! Yo! The, A the 8 AAMs on that one are actually doing their job! Very cool. Very cool indeed. D is still incoming, man. I really want to see what they're doing over there. They're getting close. That one was tracking. Looks like it was actually on the uh, other Dodo there because it was below it. Ooh! Sonic boom sound. Very cool. Loving it, loving it. 126! Oh! Dodo slapped out of the sky! We've got a solo Dodo now. Er, yeah, a slow load, solo Dodo, as it were, the last of its kind. Look at those 120Ds! Very distracted by those. Oh! Dodo's definitely got its work cut out for it here. That powerful two-point gun coming up from behind. Oh, and a cockpit snipe. Basically very rough. That means that round one goes to Rune Slayer Squadron. And a beautiful, look at that, beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous flybys there. I love it. And competition starts for round two. Let's go ahead and hit that auto cam. Slip to an actual aircraft. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so we are watching the Dodo this time again. As it flies by. The very nice, uh... I think it looks like the 120Ds are again... Tracking. Not sure which one they're actually launched at. I guess... Ooh, love that sound. Are coming closer. Not sure which one of these two it is. We're gonna get a sonic boom as these pass. Yes! Oh, it's so good! 120D zipping by this time. So they can't continue to close in. <laughs> I love that sonic boom. Oh! 120D! Actually hitting one of the Dodos and annihilating it. Those 120Ds are pretty mean missiles. That's for sure. Let's go ahead and turn off auto cam here. Let's 
Dodo does have those lambs, I believe, so it does have a chance to shoot down incoming missiles. So it could win 2v1 uh, based on that. Oh! Close range A9X hit onto the uh, one of the Morrigans. Wish I'd been able to see that. Ugh. There we go. Moving to another shot as it flies in. Very cool. Getting turning around. Ooh! Quam hitting a target close range, but it flies in front of the wrong gun! And with that, the Rune Slayer. Well, slays. Yeah, slay, girl, slay. The Rune Slayer will be moving on to the final. So here we go for our next bout. Let's go ahead and get these aircraft moving with the competition. We have Crikey's Harpe versus Stargazer Flight with the Kestrel sent in by Mechameme. And competition starts. And at those Kestrels this time as they fly in, at least for the moment. Very steady little aircraft. Is for sure. Beautiful flyby there. It's got a lock. Those long range uh, R 27s. Not surprising though, at all, considering how hot those engines are. Those engines are very, very hot. They are the hottest thing on the battlefield. Hotter than the forbidden heat signature of the sun. That is how crazy they are. Stargazers uh, flying at high speed. And that sonic boom sound. Very cool. Both these aircraft have their uh, laser anti missile systems going at full burn. Trying to blap as much as they can in the way of missiles for targets. Whoa! Stargazer is surprisingly nimble for an aircraft of that size, but when you have that much thrust behind it, well, what can you say? Got guns firing! Harpe looks like it's in trouble. Maybe. Really hard to see what's going on. Gonna go ahead and actually... Whoop, might line up a gun. Not quite yet, but I am going to drop out of fighter mode for just a moment. Both of these are pretty nimble aircraft. The Harpe is able to really turn on a dime. It can post stall way better than the Kestrel can. The Kestrel, though, is quite nimble for its size. If it gets guns on, we're gonna have, see some problems. It is trying its damnedest to get guns on. Continue to move around the battlefield here, trying to keep things in sight. So far, those BK-27s are able to get more shots on target. That AGU-11, though, is not a slouch. It only takes a few bullets to wipe out an aircraft. Also pretty tanky plane, but uh, those engines, if uh, they're pretty big, if they get hit, those engines get hit, they will, uh, well, they will start losing a great deal of performance. The engine's that far apart, I'm not sure if the gimbal will, on a solo engine would be able to save it. Another shot to the engine, looks like it started an engine fire on one of the Kestrels. I 
How those engines looking? Uh-oh, that engine not looking so hot. Oh! A quick burst from the AGU-11 shreds a wing off of one of the, uh, <laughs> one of the heart bays. Heart bay. How's it doing on fuel? Pretty good still. Plenty of fuel in that little plane. Although, uh, same cannot, however, be said. The stargazers. Or the, yeah, Kestrel. Yep, they are gonna run out of fuel fairly quickly. This could come down to fuel. Not something anyone really wants to see happen. Both sets of aircraft are now out of fuel. It is now a gliding dogfight to the terrain below. Whoa! <laughs> Uh-oh. Is it going to be able to get guns on? It's trying to engage that engine. It just can't. Whoa! It's actually the mode switch sound you're hearing there that has no fuel to actually fire. I would say when it comes to glide maneuverability, I'd probably give it to the, the heart bays, if only because they are much smaller and more nimble aircraft. Oh, we're getting a good shot. Stargazer 1, not looking so good. Still has that gun though. All it takes is one careless drift in front of that thing's nose. And that aircraft could be very dead. Ooh! Looks like Stargazer 1 is going to hit the ground. It does! Second Harbin, this is now a 1v1! <laughs> And that does not look good. Oh, no. All right. I'm going to say that Stargazer 2 has absolutely zero capability to fight back. It's also hit the terrain. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your winning aircraft for round one here is the Harpe. And competition starts for what could be the final round between these two aircraft. Let's go ahead and hit that auto cam. Switch to a plane. There we go. Since we watched those last time, let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's watch the stargazers fly in this time. That smoke is from the HHQs, uh, or some of the missiles anyway. I'm not sure which ones, actually. R-27 is being launched at very long range. Mach 2.3 and accelerating roughly into the fight. Now the funny thing is that airplane can go way faster than that, but it doesn't. Because if it does, it rams headfirst into missiles far too quickly. <laughs> Very cool. Now that they're into the dogfight proper, though, I'm going to say that the advantage goes back to the heart base. Unless they can man, unless the, uh, unless the stargazers manage to get some nice shots with that gun. Doesn't look like it's going to do that, though. Damn, Stargazer 2 gets decapitated very quickly. Not great. Not great at all. It's now a 2v1. Oh, those guns! Yikes, no weapons whatsoever on this aircraft. And no real means to control itself either. Plummeting towards the ground. 
I think it's pretty clear our victor is going to be <laughs> Harpe. Congratulations, Crikey. You're moving on to the final. And we are here, the finals of episode 7, after months of waiting. Let's start that competition and get these aircraft into the skies. Who is gonna win? Is it going to be Crikey and the Harpe? Or is it going to be Spectrum and the Morrigans? And competition starts for round one of the finals. Let's go ahead and get in here. Following the Harpe. Or at least one of them. Flying through the clouds. One of them's already launching. Looks like those are the 120... Yup! Those are the 8 AAMs. They look to be detected. You can see them out there. Already being detected. Not sure which one of those two those AIM-120Ds are actually flying for, but we can potentially figure that out. Let's go ahead and zoom on in here. Watch as these missiles fly in. For the lower heart rate, and we can see that they're being taken out by those lasers as they fly in. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Ooh! Are they actually managing to get hit by one of the 120Ds? Not sure which one. Can actually see. Probably very, very close. That one looks like it's fine, so it's probably, well, I don't know. Must have been a, a standoff blast. Wham! Zipping around. Harpe trying to avoid those clams. Unable to really get those lasers on target, it looks like. Clams buzz around. And the Morrigan's taking damage. Looks like we're getting into the gunfight portion, and this thing still has so many missiles. Both of them have lots of missiles left, it looks like. Well, both of them being both the Rune Slayers. Whoa! <laughs> You're definitely. Oh, it does a flip. Look at that. Just doing a falling leaf maneuver to get on target. I wish it would actually point at what it's shooting at. Hello, camera. Oh! Morgan managing to get slapped there. The second one also getting into that speed trap. Just remember, though, the NMB engines are the ones where uh, apparently post stalling is the problem. Definitely not the Saturn. <laughs> Either way, the first winner of your first final fight is Arpe. Let's head into round two. And competition starts. For what could be the final round here? In theory, it could go to anybody. There go those 8 AAM. God, look at those things fire. That's the first time we've caught those things actually firing. That is very cool. And just for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can follow one of those as they fly in. Maybe move uh, back a little more on the... Uh, as they fly in. Maybe not that one. There we go. Flying in at high speed here. Getting very close. The other 120D is also coming in. From range over here, we can see. The 
this time doesn't look like the 120Ds are going to do much damage. They are switching to those long range munitions. craft are equipped with HVAAs, though uh, they don't seem to be wanting to use them. At least some, one of them is, I believe. Oh, not good. Not good at all. Rune Slayer taking a massive damage there. I don't have any. Maybe I was looking at the uh, our base that had those. Either way, a lot of missiles remaining on this craft. Just wasn't able to fire them fast enough, and now getting absolutely hammered from both sides by the Harpe. I think it's pretty clear to see which one of these is going to make it! Oh! Clips a wing on the ground! Very unstable now. Jeez, the Harpe just continuing to follow behind it here. Beautiful shot of those guns carving up its target. The other one following it in. Gonna, nope, that'll be it. Rune Slayer goes down. That means, ladies and gentlemen, your winner for episode seven of FJRT season three is none other than the Harpe sent in by Crikey. Fantastic showing of a very single, very light single engine dogfighter and just fantastic capability. I mean, yeah, the laser system definitely helped, but honestly, when it came down to gunfighting, this thing was 100% on top of every situation. Its opponents just could not capitalize on the slow-moving target that it presented. It just, it was perfectly positioned almost every time. So congratulations, Crikey. Well done. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Kaz. I have made a Patreon. You can support me if you like, and the link will be in the description. And of course, you'll get a shout out in every single one of my videos going forward if you support me. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I've been Kaz. Happy building and happy blasting.